about space people. It is about time. I mean, those Dallas Negroes, perfection takes time. I mean, the Revan can wait another three days, 72 hours, 4,320 minutes, 259,200 seconds. Are you hungry? Three days, 72 hours, 4,320 minutes, 259,200 seconds. I brought you dinner and some coffee. Damn, Dallas. Really? What is this racket? Children, please stop it. All need to stop. I have to work. I have a commission to earn. I have a deadline to meet. Well, sure, you know I can't be interrupted. I thought you were taking the children to a party. That was hours ago. They're supposed to be in bed. I don't like this outside. I don't like it. I want to go home. Portia, sure, please, I don't have time for this. This is our home. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. The other one burns you. Oh, but there is no house to go back to. It's nothing but soot and scrap now. And mommy can have pretty little Fanny and soot. I love the house on Germania Street. And we will all learn to love our new home, the one here on Liberty Street. Come here, son. I said come here. Sydney, be obedient. Son, do your ears work? Yes, sir. I think you're lying. And you know we don't allow lying in the fitness home. I'm not lying. Did your ears hear? Your mother tell you, Fanny, and your brother to go to bed? Yes, sir. Are you sure your ears are hearing me tell you, Fanny, and your brother to go upstairs, get in your new beds, say your prayers, close your eyes, and don't get up until the sun rises. Yes, sir. Are your ears hearing me tell you not to scare your sister again? But it's Halloween. What? I was just having fun, that's all. Fanny? Fanny? <laughs> Go upstairs. I'm scared. I promise you, Fanny, there are no ghosts here. I will be up shortly. Good night, Mommy. Good night, Daddy. I'm sorry. I know. Good night, children. Sweet dreams. So what are you doing? You need to eat. I've heated up your dinner, and there's your coffee. I need to work. Listen, don't touch anything. William, your office is a mess. This is not suitable for you. I don't see how you can be productive amidst all of this. <gasps> Look, we have been here for two weeks now. The rest of the house is shaping up nicely. Why don't you let me help you with your office? Portia, please, if you want to help, just let me be. Look, I'm sorry. I have to finish the rent of the church. St. James? Of course. Can I see? If you must. William, these are beautiful. Father would be proud. I'm proud of you. It's going to be grand, William. A grand church, and not too far away from the Pythian. Designed by a Negro, for Negroes, and with Negro money. The Pythian's the pride of Negro Dallas. <laughs> Is it really? William, why must you be so, so, you are making a name for yourself here. The move to Dallas was a smart move for you, for us. Father thought it was a mistake. I even doubt it, but it, it is working out. But of course you went back to square one with this new house. We'll rebuild. I can give piano lessons. No! No wife of mine is going to have to work to provide for the family. That's the man's role. My role, Portia. But it can be temporary, William. I can help with getting the house into shape. Exactly what does that mean? We lost everything in the fight. We have the best to lay our head on at night. 
a, a table to eat on, food in the pantry. That should suffice for now, Portia. But I'm, we're supposed to host the Christmas party for Christmas the party? Christmas party? No, Portia. That was before the house on Germania Street burnt down to the ground. We won't host anything. We can't. But William, members of four of the most important families in Dallas's Negro community will be in our home. We need to be seen. Correction. You need to be seen. Booker T. Washington's only daughter lives in Dallas, and she needs to be seen by all her high brow Negroes. That's not what I meant. Sure it is. It's who you are, Portia. Who you are going to. Then just bend a little. You have your work, and I have the house and the children. I need something to- What? I need something- A uh, new piano. My father gave me that piano. He had it made especially for me, carved my name in- I know, I know, I know, Portia. I will buy you another one in time, maybe even by Christmas. But if you and the children continue to interrupt me and not let me finish my work, I won't be able to provide for you the way you deserve. The way I deserve? What does that mean? You know what it means. I am not a foolish woman, William. My value doesn't lie in, in things. Above all else, I value time, partnership, thoughtfulness. What are you talking about? I deserve a husband who will- Don't even finish the sentence. Let me finish it for you. You deserve a husband that's going to pamper you, give you your heart's desire, go to any lavish party those uppity Negroes tend to throw brag about his every accomplishment, every degree, every university attended, every building erected from designs that spawned out of his brilliant Negro mind. And of course, boast about the famous father, the great Booker T. William, I deserve a husband who will remember his wedding anniversary. Eleven years ago today, we married in Tuskegee Chapel on Halloween. Love conquered fear. Love won. I never liked Halloween until then. <laughs> I am worried about you. You've become so difficult and abrasive that you are you listening to me? Or not me, not the children, not our neighbors, not even your clients. You talk so much about being the pride of the Negro, yet you tear everyone around you down. You won't even celebrate your own accomplishments. Where's the love that you used to have for me? For yourself. You walk around here like you don't belong to anyone or anything. Portia, please, let me finish my work. Our children were right. A ghost does live here. His name is William Sidney Pittman. 